Hey everybody, welcome back. As you can see, we have something on the table that I picked up from Flytanium. So you guys probably saw the drop as well, but they got sent a cool blue sticker with this one. I think they knew it was coming to me. But these are the Crossfade Bug Out Basket Weave Carbon Fiber Scales. So the full size bug out. So we're gonna do a little build today. We're gonna swap out some scales on a Benchmade Bug Out CF Elite. So you're getting that black blade, that black hardware. This one was just made. So let's see what we get in the box, of course. Microfiber bag, access lock paperwork. But the important part is we get that beautiful, beautiful foundation. Black hardware, black liners. I think it's going to look really good with these basket weave carbon fiber scales. So we'll go ahead, drop the knife there. Ooh, this one's nice and stiff. We're going to have to adjust that. Look at that. I can't even shake it closed. Maybe that one's supposed to go to Canada. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So we'll do our, we'll get our unboxing knife here. Make sure we don't cut that beautiful Flytanium sticker. Because we want to save that for the collection. Okay. Let's take a look at these. Now, you can pick these up on Flytanium's website. They're $84. There's that beautiful sticker. Right on, Flytanium. I love it. Like the blue, that's pretty cool. But here's your scales. Now, these are the crossfade. And you've seen, a, hopefully, you've seen a couple of my videos. And you can see right here where they mill out this, these areas here. So you get a little bit better access to the axis lock bar. And it just makes it really, really easy to use. And you can see how beautiful that carbon fiber is. I think it's going to look great. They included the lanyard fans here. So Shout out to the Lanyard fans. Got some million on point there. Now these are tapped for right hand carry only as you can see. And they have the, the threaded inserts. You can see the internal milling right here for the liners. But I will say this, you can request to have the left handed ones. You can have it drilled for left handed carry. If you put a detailed note when you order these from Flytanium. So that's really cool. I like how they do that. Don't forget, we also have some really good friends here in the community who are um, dealers of Flytanium products as well. So if you don't see what you want on their website, you can hook up with one of the dealers. Let me know. We'll put a link down in the description. Now, we are gonna need some tools for today. So of course, we got our Journey Tool Co. kit, made in the USA. We got the Tourist Driver. And that beautiful coated aluminum makes it really easy to work on these. And then we're going to need a T6. Got the Weehaw bits in there. So T6 for the body screws. And we're going to need a T10 for the pivot. I think, is that the T10? Yep, T10. So, okay. So we got our two bits we're going to need. We're going to put this off to the side. We'll get that later. And... I was gonna do a mat. I was gonna use one of the new mats that I just got, but it's I tried it out and it's really dark. So I just got a little uh, bit of tissue here and that's gonna kind of hold the screws so they don't roll around on the table. So anyways, so let's get to work on this. Let's do a quick little swap out. Now, easy thing to do is take this side of the pivot and we're gonna replace this scale first and I'll leave these barrel spacers in place and then that way we can reinstall all that, keep it together, makes it really easy when we do the swap out. So we're gonna take the body screws off first. Now also remember, Benchmade does not condone this. This will void your Life Sharp warranty, according to their website. Flytanium also notes that on their website. But if you do it properly, if you know, you know a little bit about this and you kind of follow these easy steps, we'll get it done right. They also do put a little tiny bit of Loctite on there. So you can see that on the threads. I'll show this on this next one here. You can see a little bit of that white material. That's the dried thread locker Loctite. So we'll get all the body screws off just on this one side. We'll take off the one side of the pivot and then I'll show you how we're gonna replace that. So we'll swap out to our T10 We're gonna do that. And then we're gonna compare this to some of the other cross fade scales that I've picked up. 
This pivot's really tight. Holy cow. Hope they didn't cross thread it. Jeez. I almost needed to get my stubby driver, get some more leverage. My goodness. Oh my gosh. They Loctited the heck out of this. Look at all this Loctite that's falling out. <laughs> all right. So we won't use any putting that back together. Let me do a little tap. Get all that out. Hold on a sec. Get this off the table. Holy cow. So we're not going to pop that pivot out yet, but this scale should now just lift right off. And there you go. So it's all together. We'll put this right side on. Get a little bit of extra lubrication on there. And you can see already how that's going to look. Oh my gosh. It's going to look terrific. So we're going to replace these screws, but we're not going to replace the pivot. Because we're going to need to take that pivot out. So we'll go back to our T6. Get that back on. And I try to do one at each end. Man, these are looking good. <laughs> Can't wait to carry this. This looks good. What do you guys think already? Oh yeah. I'm digging that. All right. Well, that was a good, good idea. They also came out with I think it was, uh, what was the carbon fiber? They utilized like a shredded marbled carbon fiber, I think. So you had two options. You had these basket weave ones, and I like the look of the basket weave a lot. And they almost kind of mimic the, uh, let's just gently roll it out. Yeah, that's going to look really, really good. Okay. Let's do the other side. Now on this side, we do have to take the pocket clip off because we want to use that. And these pocket clip screws are a little bit longer than the body screws. So you want to keep those together. So I usually just keep them in the clip there, put that off to the side, brush off a little bit. And I don't take the pivot out yet because I have a, I have a special tool. You guys have seen the pivot alignment tool from Rust Bucket Goods on Etsy. You just go to Etsy, type in pivot alignment tool. It'll pop right up. He offers some in steel, aluminum, like an aluminum knurled. I have the, the standard aluminum one right here with me right now. But this is just a really good way to kind of take that, that bug out to the next level. You know what I mean? Make it look all church-like. So we're at this point right here. So now we're going to take our pivot alignment tool. This has a flat side, as you can see right there, because the in, inside of this is a D shape that kind of holds everything together. So we're going to basically take this and we're going to push it through. And the D shape, the flat side of the D should be facing up towards the spine of the knife. So we'll find our flat spot right here. We'll put it up towards the top and you may have to pull the axis bar back a little bit to get that to push through this one i think they loctited through that whole thing because it is so rugged okay i'm gonna do a little cheating here i'm gonna use this to try to push through real quick oh my gosh you see how crazy that was okay so now i can get my alignment tool we'll put it flat side up and then you can see how that pushes through. And then now you have your male side of the pivot. And now this scale right here should come right off as the first one did. Put that off to the side. We'll slide this one on. Should fit perfect with all your barrel spacers, which it does. Is that? Yep. There we go. Excellent. And now we'll just put that T6 back in there. And the cool part about this tool is it holds it all together. I know other people have used like Q-tips and other jammed other things kind of inside the, you know, push the axis lar back and jam a Q-tip through there and you cut the tips, tips off. And I've done that. That works good. Um, if you're going to be doing this and you're not super comfortable, 
this makes it really, really easy. Um, I think they're about $20 and sh his shipping's pretty quick. So I, I highly recommend them if you're gonna take one of these apart on your own. Just my, you don't have to, but just my pointer that, I mean, I've done tons of them without it and with it and it's like, oh my gosh. So now we're gonna put our pocket clip back on. And already, as you can see, it's drilled for a three hole pattern, kind of that universal one. So if you don't like the mini deep pocket, you can switch over and put a standard clip on it. You can go all out, do a MXG gear or the awesome Lynch clip from Casey Lynch, Lynch Northwest. All right. Make sure those are nice and snugged up. Not too tight, but snugged up enough. Those are all good. Okay. All right. Now, take this pivot and we're gonna find the flat side of that, which is right there. And we're gonna put that towards the top like that. And we're gonna pull this axis bar back, axis bar back to relieve some of that tension. As you can see, it starts to slide real easily. And then we're just gonna wiggle this through and that pops out a little bit. Now with this one, it's still pretty tight. So one of the tricks that I've done is I've gone and inserted this back through. If you have a tight pivot or a tight fit, help if you use the right side. I was using the large side, which is for like large griptilians and such. So it's tight, it won't go back in. That's a common thing. Take this middle, middle uh, screw, back it out just a little bit. Same with this one. Do it on both sides. And that's gonna let your liners flex a little bit when you're trying to put that back through there. So that's been something that I've found that helps a lot. So I wanna make sure and show you guys that. And then you just kind of jiggle this a little bit. You do have to, you know, work it in there because you're basically going through the scale, the liner, the washer, the blade, the washer, the scale, or the, <laughs> the liner, and then the scale on the other side. So these sometimes need a little bit of help. And of course, what we found on this side is the washer is kind of in the middle. So then you can use this as just a little bit of a pick, straighten that stuff out, get it pushed through, and get it into place. So once it's flush, as you can see here, you're good to go. You'll see your other side ready for this we'll swap back out to our t10 and we have our build complete scale swap done and we're going to do some weight comparisons in just a second not personal weight but weight of the blades now i always tighten mine all the way down so i tighten it all the way down i check the blade centering all that good stuff this one looks pretty good now one of the things we need to do is we need to go back to that t6 and we need to tighten these screws down. We don't want them to fall out. We don't want anything like that to happen. It's happened to me. So we'll go back through and you can always put a little Loctite back on there if you want. That's always a good idea. So now we're gonna basically just adjust our pivots. We're gonna put our T10 back on because obviously right now, like it won't even barely work. That's kind of how it came out of the box. So we're gonna adjust this out a little bit see if we get any better motion we don't and that's pretty tight in there there we go we got it working a little bit better because i don't want that pivot as you can hear that pivot's loose in there and we don't want that so we'll go through what do you guys think that's pretty terrific so we'll go ahead, we'll wipe off this blade a little bit, get the fingerprints off. That's a pretty sweet build. I like that scale swap. The scales are beautiful, the cross fade. They give you a lot of, a lot of easy access to that lock bar right there. A little bit more of a cutout, a lot easier to operate. The clip on there just classes up the knife. You know, you do spend $84, but to me, it's totally worth it. 
So let's go ahead and get some of these tools out of here. And then we're going to do a comparison with some of the current uh, current Benchmade bug out models. And then we'll also do a comparison of the weight between some of them. So let's do a cross fade lineup. And I think we'll be looking good if we do something like this. And this is the titanium bead blasted one. Beautiful. The beautiful. This is my favorite so far. And then, of course, we have the black linen micarta one. Also just gorgeous. And I had to go get another bug out just to do this one because I wanted to compare all three together. Similar builds. And they look fantastic. So out of these three, which one's your favorite now? By looks... I don't know. It's tied between these two. I haven't carried this one yet. Obviously, I just built it, so I'm going to carry this one. This titanium one, though. Oof. Now, they make them for the mini bug out. They make them for the bug out. I've seen some really cool new ones for the spider co's. They're, they're coming. They're bringing their game. Flytanium's up their level of quality. I'm digging this. So, now let's throw in a couple stock bug outs. We have the aluminum scale one, the 535BK-4. And then we're going to throw one more in. And that's the 535-3. I was going to say BK, but BK means it's coated blade. This is stock. This is stock. Now, in comparison to these two, you probably want to see it real quick. So that's your difference. See a little bit of difference in carbon fiber. Both kind of that basket weave. You know, this one's got some pop of blue. So I could also do some blue barrel spacers and a thumb stud to kind of bring out some color if I want. So there's your lineup right there of these five bug outs. All, in my opinion, all kind of that next level, really taking your game forward uh, in comparison to just a standard, you know, 535 bug out. So a way to dress it up, you can take one of these throw any of these scales right on it. Instant classic, instant customizing. I love it. Now let's get the weight going. And of course I had to show just for fun, the blue G10 stock from Benchmade. It's always by my side, but it's one of the classics. So let me get the scale here. And we're going to do a little weight comparison. I just want to do a weight comparison between a standard bug out, which should be in the neighborhood of like 1.86. Look at that, 1.86 on the dot. So we got that one. So if you upgrade, obviously it's gonna be a smidge more. I should have weighed these ahead of time because you have a coated blade, but you add the carbon fiber scales to that, 2.06. So 0.2 of an ounce addition with a coated blade and carbon fiber scales compared to FRN. So you throw some of the other ones on there, you know, the aluminum scaled one, 2.5. So you can see how that stuff goes, you know? Um, but the black linen Micarta one, 1.98. So those are even lighter. That's crazy. And then the titanium, of course, gets that weight up there a little bit, 2.8. So overall, I think you're good. You know, you're still in that lightweight category, right at about two ounces with this carbon fiber one. What do you guys think? Are you guys in for the crossfade? Let me know down in the comments. Have you used the crossfade scale yet on your bug out? Because to me, this is the way to go. You know, if I had a bug out and I wanted to add anything, I mean, they got G10 colors. They got all sorts of stuff in this crossfade cutout. It's, it, to me, it's a hit. It's, it's a win, big time. So anyways, it's a longer video, but you guys want to see the scale swap out. I wanted to do it for you. You guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Leave me that comment down below. Also, don't forget, do something kind for someone makes an awesome day for yourself and the other person. You guys have a great rest of your day, but most importantly, take care.